The Lord be with you. I'm Deacon Keith Fournier, and our first reading is from the Book of Wisdom. What human being indeed can know the intentions of God? And who can comprehend the will of the Lord? For the reasoning of mortals is inadequate. Our attitudes of mind unstable. For a perishable body presses down the soul, and this tent of clay weighs down the mind with its many cares. It is hard enough for us to work out what is on earth, laborious to know what lies within our reach. Who then can discover what is in the heavens? And who could ever have known your will, had you not given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from above? Thus have the paths of those on earth been straightened, and people have been taught what pleases you, and have been saved by wisdom. In our responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 90. You bring human beings to the dust by saying, Return, children of Adam. A thousand years are to you like a yesterday which has passed, like a watch of the night. You flood them with sleep. In the morning they will be like growing grass. In the morning it is blossoming and growing. By evening it is withered and dry. Teach us to count up the days that are ours, and we shall come to the heart of wisdom. Come back, Yahweh. How long must we wait? Take pity on your servants. Each morning fill us with your faithful love. We shall sing and be happy all our days. Let our joy be as long as the time that you afflicted us, the years when we experienced disaster. Show your servants the deeds you do. Let their children enjoy your splendor. May the sweetness of the Lord be upon us to confirm the work we have done. And our second reading is from the letter of the Apostle Paul to Philemon. I am rather appealing to your love, being what I am, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for a child of mine, whose father I became while wearing these chains. I mean Onesimus. I'm sending him back to you. That is to say, sending you my own heart. I should have liked to keep him with me. He could have been a substitute for you to help me while I am in the chains that the gospel has brought me. However, I did not want to do anything without your consent. It would have been forcing your act of kindness, which should be spontaneous. I suppose you have been deprived of Onesimus for a time, merely so that you could have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but something much better than a slave, a dear brother, especially dear to me. But how much more to you, both on the natural plane and in the Lord? So if you grant me any fellowship with yourself, welcome him as you would me. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Great crowds accompanied Jesus on his way, and he turned and spoke to them. Anyone who comes to me without hating father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yes, in his own life too, cannot be my disciple. No one who does not carry his cross and come after me can be my disciple. And indeed, which of you here, intending to build a tower, would not first sit down and work out the cost to see if he had enough to complete it? Otherwise, if he laid the foundation and then found himself unable to finish the work, anyone who saw it would start making fun of him and saying, here is someone who started to build and was unable to finish. Or again, what king marching to war against another king would not first sit down and consider whether with 10,000 men he could stand up to the other who was advancing against him with 20,000? If not, then while the other king was still a long way off, he would send envoys to sue for peace. So in the same way, none of you can be my disciple without giving up all that he owns. The Gospel of the Lord.